My name is the Reverend Nigel Irons and it's my pleasure to welcome you to St Edward's Church in Leek for our service of morning worship on, on this, this 21st Sunday after Trinity, which will begin by singing our first hymn. So now, trusting in the mercy of God, we come to make our confession to our Heavenly Father. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry, and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. And so may God, our Heavenly Father, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The first reading is taken from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29. 
This is the text of the letter that the prophet Jeremiah sent from Jerusalem to the surviving elders among the exiles and to the priests, the prophets, and all the other people Nebuchadnezzar had carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. This was after King Joachim and the Queen Mother, the court officials, the leaders of Judah and Jerusalem, the craftsmen and the artisans had gone into exile from Jerusalem. He entrusted the letter to Elassar, son of Shaphan, and to Jeremiah, son of Hilkiah, whom Zedekiah, king of Judah, sent to King Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon. It said, This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those I carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number there. Do not decrease. Also, seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. Yes, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Do not let the prophets and diviners among you deceive you. Do not listen to the dreams you encourage them to have. They are prophesying lies to you in my name. I have not sent them, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Titus, chapter 2, verses 11 to 15. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright and godly lives in this present age while we wait for the blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our great God and Saviour Jesus Christ who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own eager to do what is good. These, then, are the things you should teach. Encourage and rebuke with all authority. Do not let anyone despise you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. And now we'll sing our second hymn.
Alleluia, alleluia. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to Jesus. Teacher, they said, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. What do you want me to do for you? he asked. They replied, let one of us sit at your right and the other at your left in your glory. You don't know what you are asking, Jesus said. Can you drink the cup I drink or be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, You will drink the cup I drink and be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with. But to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared. When the ten heard about this, they became indignant with James and John. Jesus called them together and said, You know, that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be the slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to serve, but to be served, and to give his life as a ransom for many. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let's just pray for Anna before she speaks. So, Father, we thank you for bringing Anna to us this morning. We pray for your blessing on her now as she talks to us about what you are doing in her and through her, that we may be encouraged in our prayers for her and and she too in her ministry as she prepares to return soon to Lima. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good morning. It's lovely to be back again here with you all this morning. Um, I was chatting to a few of you earlier and I think we worked out the last time I was here was 2019, so it's been a while. Uh, But it's great to be back here and thanks again for all your ongoing um, support. Um, I really appreciate it. So my name's Anna Sims. I've been with the Church Mission Society uh, working in Lima in Peru for 11 years now. Um, And I'd just like to share with you a few things this morning. As um, many of you may remember, I've been um, working predominantly with um, foreign uh, prisoners and ex-offenders who've been caught arrested and taking cocaine out of Peru. They come from all over the world um, and we visit them and support them in prison and then also when they uh, are released they often are unable to go to their passport countries, return to their passport countries and so um, we support them in a number of ways. I'm just going to share a video with you um, for uh, it's about a three minute video Um, we had the amazing opportunity of running a retreat with some of the ex-offenders and um, the ones that had children brought their children with them um, in February this year and so here's just a selection of photos from the retreat. I have Oh 
about seven different countries represented um, with the um, women that we were serving and also with an international team of volunteers who, was, uh, who were running the event. And it was really exciting because it just gave the women an opportunity to step away from their normal routine, um, which is often quite, they're living in quite precarious situations. Um, they're mainly undocumented um, and just sort of living um, hand to mouth every, every day with whatever they can um, whatever they can sort of uh, get together. Uh, we try and help them um, uh, train them up so they're able to support themselves and their families um, economically and become independent. And they just, the feedback from the retreat was really great that they were just able to have a few days where they could just come away. They got cooked for, they didn't have to clean, and um, they just had time um, with the Lord and just different inputs and workshops, times of worship. And then as you saw at the end, uh, we finished with a time of um, communion together and so I just wanted to share that and um, because for us it was a real highlight it was the first retreat as I said that we've been able to run and it was just a really um, joyous occasion and um, when I go back to Peru um, next week um, I'm signing up for another two-year stint as you may remember I um, go for sort of for two or three year blocks at a time and I'm going to have a slight change of um, ministry focus. I will still be involved with prison ministry, um, but not full-time as I have been. And so I just wanted to share a bit about what I've been doing over the last year and a half, as well as prison ministry, and just share a bit about what the future holds for me when I go back um, in October. So um, I belong to a church that's called eCafe Church. And that stands for Imagination, Culture, Art and Faith. And they've got a real desire to reach people that are maybe on the fringes, um, sort of working in the creative industries, feel that they don't, maybe they've given up on God, or feel like that there's no place for them in a sort of more traditional um, church setting. A couple that go to that church, um, Sarah and Waikie, um, they live in a... Um, neighbourhood that would have been a shanty town about 40 years ago. There's lots of problems um, with gangs there. Um, Waikie grew up in the neighbourhood. Sarah is his wife. She's from the States. And they um, moved there with a desire to set up a business and help give um, young people um, an opportunity uh, for a different um, path in life, if you like. Um, in TIU is Quechua, which is the Andean language in Peru, um, and it means community of light. And so last Easter, some of you may remember if you've um, seen some of my newsletters, um, I um, organised a number of exhibitions on the street in different locations around Lima. They were using um, Stations of the Cross, um, that were designed by a graphic, a Christian graphic designer, graphic artist in the States. And they had a slight twist on them because the last station of the cross um, was about the resurrection. And we put them up on um, different railings and buildings around Lima. And in the photos, um, the bottom two um, are my church, e cafe, that's on the railings outside. And that's in the kind of, kind of neighborhood that's kind of quite arty, got a lot of nightclubs, a lot of street art going on in that neighborhood. On the top row um, is two different um, buildings in an area called Pamplona. On the left is the Anglican Church um, called Shalom. And on the right-hand side is the NTIU building that I've just mentioned. And you can see in the background a bit of what maybe the housing's like. Um, lots of buildings sort of precariously built on, on the sand dunes. Because remember that Lima is a big, it's the second biggest um, desert city in the world. So from um, that, I started doing a bit more work with Waikie and Sarah, and they were um, working with different communities up further up the hill. So the further up the hill you go, the less developed the neighbourhoods are, and they're called invasions. And um, this particular community, La Capilla, um, all the children had lost at least one parent, if not both, to COVID. So there was a massive crisis in this community. Um, they're living sort of, because they're so high up in the sand dunes, they're living sort of covered in cloud about half the year. And so that brings loads of different health issues. And then they were obviously all grieving. Some of them, as I said, were orphans. Some of them had um, lost only one parent um, to COVID. And so we were going up and working with uh, community leaders and um, doing sort of workshops. Here you can see some photos from a printmaking workshop that we did. And um, Sarah's background is in art, like myself, 
And the point of this workshop, it's a type of printmaking called monoprinting, where you just get one image. And so we were talking to the children about how we're all individual, we're all created in the image of God, but God has made us all uniquely um, like these artworks that we were doing. Later on in the year, we had an event where we um, organised a community event. So the community um, often has the, sh the streets are shut down for big parties, where there's lots of drinking all day and into the night, and it can be it's quite a dodgy area. And so we got permission from the council to shut down the street for one day, and we had a community event where we had music playing, different people from um, church, different neighbours, different friends, and we painted the side of the building with a mural. Um, and we sold food and it was a really great family event and lots of people just passing through to catch the bus stopped and did a bit of painting. So this is just a, a one minute video um, giving you an idea of what happened in that event. Pon tu celular en modo amigo En modo amor, en modo hermano, en modo hijo Si no quieres quedar sin batería, pon tu celular en modo vida. Pon tu celular en modo amigo, en modo amor, en modo hermano, en modo hijo. Si no quieres quedar sin batería, pon tu celular en modo vida. ¿Qué tal si nos sentamos a charlar? ¿Qué tal si nos comemos un helado? Y emprendemos la titánica misión de mirarnos a los ojos y encontrarnos. ¿Qué tal si me reemplazas ese beso? ¿Qué tal si me reemplazas ese beso? Que si es de carne o es entonces esos corazones en los ojos tendré yo. Pon tu celular en modo amigo, en modo amor, en modo hermano, en modo hijo. Si no quieres quedar sin batería, pon tu celular en modo vida. And there's loads of ex examples in Latin America specifically of neighbourhoods where they've started painting buildings or doing murals and that sort of lifted the neighbourhood up. People have come to visit, it's become a more touristy area, security's increased, there's been less robberies and it's really just a way of um, the locals empowering themselves um, within, within the neighbourhood to create a beautiful space. And so it's really exciting. I'm really excited to be part of um, both the church and also this community project. Um, we opened the restaurant in um, June. Um, and you just see, a, um, this was a restaurant dedication. So you can see the pastor of Eat Cafe Church um, speaking on the Jeremiah passage that we had earlier. Um, different people praying. There's leaders there from the local Anglican churches that I've worked with when I first um, arrived in Peru 11 years ago. And so it was a real sense of bringing light to that corner of the neighbourhood and working in collaboration with other, other believers, other believers, other Christians, people wanting to see God's kingdom come um, to that area and light in that area and giving people a real sense of hope um, in their neighbourhood. Um, the event was live streamed and we had um, food and uh, worship and praying, as I said, and live painting. And then since the, um, since the education, um, YQ has been working on the 
on the um, menu. So here you can see some typical um, Peruvian cuisine, um, and he's going to be hiring uh, young people to train them up both in the kitchen and up front of house. You can see in the top photo that a, a local artist has done another mural on the front, and they're speaking to other business owners as, as well about um, having other um, murals in the area to make it a real kind of destination place. Um, the reason why this passage in Jeremiah that you heard earlier is really important to me is because God's used it a number of times since I've been in Peru. Um, sometimes it does feel like I've been sent into exile if I'm having a dramatic moment. But I think we can all just take um, a truth from, from that passage wherever we find ourselves. I've got a friend, uh, a wise friend, who often speaks about blooming where we're planted. And I just think it's so important that we're engaging in wherever, whatever neighbourhood or town or city that we're living in and praying for the welfare of that place um, and praying for God's kingdom to come. So I'd... Um, Thank you again, like I said, for all your support. Um, I think you've all been given um, a leaflet with a bookmark, which has got my face on. So if you fancy having my face in a book to help you uh, remember to pray for Lima, there's some um, prayer points on that um, on the bookmark. And then also just finally here as well, um, there's just a couple of um, things to be praying for as I return back um, to this new chapter in Peru and um, for the community project and the restaurant um, for a wisdom for the leadership of eCafe Church. So I know that I'm going to be doing a couple of days a week within the church and a couple of days a week within the community project, but we haven't quite pinned down my exact role yet. Um, for the Walking in Liberty prison ministry that's going through various transitions, obviously including myself not being there full time anymore. And then just please be praying for Lima and Peru. There's, it's such a difficult situation in the country at the moment. And um, yeah, just, just, we just long to see uh, God's kingdom come. So thank you ever so much for listening. I look forward to chatting to more of you over lunch. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand, of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now we'll sing our third hymn. Thank you. 
souls to bear. His heart with sorrow was torn. Yet not my will, but yours, he said. This is our Part of our prayers are going to be for ourselves and then we'll pray for the wider community and the world when I say Lord in your mercy could you respond with help us in our weakness let's try it Lord in your mercy help, help us, us in our weakness Almighty God our Father and Creator Thank you for your plan to renew all things and the hope that you have set before us. Thank you, Jesus, for suffering that humiliating death on the cross at Calvary and for sending your Holy Spirit to be with us always. Forgive us, Lord Jesus, for not spending more time with you and spending less time than we should in your word. Lord, in your mercy, help us in, in our weakness. weakness. Dear Lord Jesus, help us to overcome evil with good and help us not to be conformed any longer to this world's way of doing things, but to be transformed by the constant renewing of our minds. Lord, in your mercy, Help, help us, us in, in our, our weakness. weakness. Please help us to bring all our thoughts into line with yours in everything, in word and deed. Lord, in your mercy, help, help us, us in, in our weakness. weakness. We know that not just us, but the whole of creation is groaning as though in labour pains awaiting your redemptive renewal. Please forgive us for complaining and groaning 
instead of giving you thanks in all things, in sickness and in health. Lord, in your mercy, help, help us, us in, in our, our weakness. weakness. Your word assures us that regardless of age, they who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall rise up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and shall not faint. Father God, as we live under the shadow of your wing, we have security. Our souls are protected. You hold everything together. Lord Jesus, you have provided your Holy Spirit to intercede for each one of us with sighs too deep for words. So as we sit here under the shadow of your wing, let us breathe in deeply the warmth of your love as we relax in your presence. Breathe in God's agape love. Make it yours. Breathe in his peace which passes all understanding. And breathe out your anxieties and negativities. Breathe in his peace. Breathe in his joy and breathe out misery and loneliness. Breathe in his joy, which is your strength. Breathe in the faithfulness of God. Breathe out double-mindedness. Breathe in his faithfulness and hope. Breathe in his patience and perseverance. And breathe in his kindness, goodness and self-control. Lord, in your mercy, help us in our weakness. In addition, Lord, because we have to negotiate our ch changing culture, which has departed from your word, we need to know the difference between what is true and what is a lie. So we ask you for your wisdom and discernment. Lord, in your mercy, help, help us, us in, in our, our weakness. weakness. As your word instructs us, Lord Jesus, we pray for those in authority over us, for all our leaders in our church family, and particularly for the panel meeting tomorrow to select a new team vicar for Leek and Meerbrook. We ask your blessing on all those taking part and upon your children everywhere throughout this planet. And we ask for your inspiration for their leaders. We thank you for the people of our local council, the police, ambulance, health services, and ask for wisdom for them as they engage with the wider community and please protect Karen, our local member of parliament, and all in Westminster who serve this nation. For our royal family, we ask your healing and that your spirit of grace rests upon them to bring them to your throne. We know that you are the one who writes history and that the wheels of your mill grind slowly and steadily to bring in your harvest. We leave to you the many things that we do not understand, but simply ask that we are fit to serve you in spirit and in truth. Lord, in your mercy, help, help us, us in, in our weakness. weakness. And now we'll sing our fourth hymn.
And so now, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and in the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father who has created us, the Son who has redeemed us, and the Holy Spirit who breathes God's life, light and love into our hearts, rest upon you remain with you, guard you, guide you, keep you, and strengthen you in his service today and always. Amen. Thank you for joining us for our service here today. We extend a warm welcome to you to join us again next week for our all-age celebration service.